What's going on, nation? Today we're going to be talking about the six dumbest burpee mistakes sabotaging your gains. Now, if you missed my last video where I talked about the dumbest push up mistakes sabotaging your gains, I'll post a link to that down in the info section below. But I also want to say, because I spent a lot of time in the comment section, I see a lot of you are asking for dumbest mistake videos on exercises that I've actually already covered. So what I'm going to do for you is if you go to the info section and you click on the link for the push up video, I'm actually going to include the playlist link so you can see every dumbest mistake video I've already done. So make sure you check that out. A few other things before we get started guys, if you're not following me on Instagram, please come check me out, Scott Herman Fitness on Instagram. I'm starting to get more into uh, calisthenics and I'm going to be posting a lot of stories on that. And I'm always posting fun photos and memes and stuff there too. So give me a follow if you enjoy my content. And then last but not least, if you are enjoying the Dumbest Mistakes series, make sure you leave your, com your comments below of what you would like to see in the future so I can keep giving you guys what you're asking for. Now let's get started. All right guys, so the first mistake is not utilizing full range of motion of the movement. I'd rather you guys be able to do five amazing burpees than push yourself to do 15 and they look like junk. Because the junk burpees aren't going to help you progress with the movement or get any stronger or maximize your calorie burn. And if you think about the burpee, you're pretty much doing four different exercises. You're dropping down into a plank. From the plank, you're going to do a push up. From the push up, you're going to go into a squat. And then after the squat, you're going to jump into the air. And it's the combination of these four movements which is what makes the burpee one of the best exercises you can do to maximize your calorie burn, spike your heart rate, and get amazing results. So I'm going to go really slow real quick and show you guys what proper form looks like. And this is probably what it's going to look like for a lot of you who've never done a burpee before because you're not going to be going full throttle out of the gate when you start with this movement. I want you guys going slow, okay? So, slow version of the burpee, standing up straight just like this. You don't have to drop to the floor. Granted, if you want to go faster and once you're stronger, you can just kind of drop to the floor. But if you're not there yet, you want to keep this as low impact on your joints as possible. So what you're going to do from here is come down and get your hands on the ground. And once you're in this position, you're going to jump back to the plank. Then as soon as you're in plank position, you're going to go into your push-up. So the push-up is all the way down to the ground, all the way back to the top. Once you get here, you're going to jump forward, thrusting your knees either into your chest or to the outside of your hands, whatever your flexibility allows you to do. So jump out to the side like this. Then as you come up, you're obviously doing the top portion of a squat, but as you come up from the squat, you're going to jump in the air as high as you can. And that's utilizing full range of motion of the movement. Visually see these four different exercises that you're completing throughout the entire repetition, and that's what you're going to be working with as you continue with your repetitions. Mistake number two is having a loose core throughout the movement. A lot of people fatigue relatively quickly when doing burpees because they're not keeping their core tight. And a lot of other people actually end up getting a lot of lower back pain for the same reason. You guys want to be as strong as possible when you're doing the squat and when you're doing the plank and when you're doing the push up. And the only way you can stay super strong is by keeping your core tight. Because a loose core, this starts to happen throughout the movement. And that's not what you want. So, for example, when you guys go down into the plank position, usually one of two things will happen. Is they'll go down and hit the plank, but when they get to this position, because they don't keep their core tight, you get a dip like this. And obviously a dip like this is going to prevent you from doing a proper push-up, but also if you're going down kind of fast, say you're doing them a little bit more advanced with the burpees where you're able to do them a little bit faster, if you're going really fast and you jump down and do this, all that impact hits your lower back and you're going to start to really feel it. Now the other end of the spectrum is maybe you don't dip down like this, but when you land you actually keep your hips nice and high. And again, the reason why this is happening is because you're starting to fatigue and you're not keeping your core tight, so in order to compensate for that, you're putting your hips high in the air. And then what this does is it actually changes uh, the range of motion of your push-up, where instead of using chest and triceps to do the push-up, you're up here like this and you're hitting a lot more front delts a lot, and a lot more going through your shoulders. 
And what's going to happen is your chest and triceps obviously are a lot stronger. You're going to be able to do a lot more burpees properly if you're utilizing your chest and triceps during the push-up. But if you're constantly pushing through your shoulders, your shoulders are going to fatigue much quicker and you're going to have an even harder time holding yourself for the plank and also holding yourself when you go from here to here and then go into the jump. So, in order to get rid of all of this, what you guys want to do is make sure you're taking in a breath, keeping that core nice and tight as you drop down. So, take in a breath, keep that core nice and tight, come down and do a push up. And maybe even reset your breath after the push-up before you go into the squat, depending on how fast you're going. You don't have to hold your breath the entire thing. You, you kind of want to breathe regularly, but you want to plan your breaths so your core can stay tight as you're doing the movement. So do the push-up, reset your breath, and then jump, reset your breath, and then go into your next repetition. Mistake number three is something I like to call stiff leg dropping. And this you see in beginners, but you also see it a lot as people start to fatigue. Probably what gets the fatigue the most for, I would say, the majority of people is the quads. Because you're doing a lot of jumping and a lot of squatting. And as soon as those quads start to get tight or fatigued, generally you don't want to bend them if you don't have to. <laughs> but that can lead to a problem to what I call stiff leg dropping. And basically, instead of people bending their knees to help you know, lessen the impact on their wrists, to go into the movement. So even if you were to bend your knees like this and then jump back, or if you were going a bit faster and you did a combination of bending your knees and jumping back at the same time, it's still going to be a lot better than this. And this is what the stiff leg dropping is. It's basically people get tired and then they just kind of bend over and they just do this. And so their feet, their, their knees basically never bend and you have the entire impact of dropping your body from literally this height and your hands hitting the ground. Granted, you can try to absorb some of the impact by obviously bending your hands as soon as you get there, but it can be a potentially dangerous thing to do, especially if that impact goes through your wrists and also gets into your shoulders, or if you're getting so fatigued that you're doing that, that your hands, that your arms start giving out because they're tired from the push-ups, you could potentially stiff leg drop and then smash your face right off the ground. And I gotta tell you, it's probably not gonna feel too good if you do that. So, Mistake number three is stiff leg dropping. Guys, just make sure you're bending those knees. And at the end of the day, if you start to get really tired, instead of skipping that part of the movement, I would rather you just take it back a step and literally bring yourself to the ground and then jump back to the plank position before coming back and doing the upper portion of the movement. Mistake number four is landing on flared elbows. And I'll show you guys what I mean. It's going to go down into the bottom portion of the movement. Now typically as muscles start to fatigue, which can be obviously your chest and triceps when you're landing on the ground, in order to compensate for that, some people like to turn their elbows out and they'll land more on flared elbows like this versus landing solid and having their arms tucked in this way. Now the problem with this is, is twofold. Problem number one, if you're landing on flared elbows, you're going to feel a lot more tension and pressure throughout your shoulders and your rotator cuff. And we talked about this in my Dumbest Mistakes series when doing push-ups. Also, if you're landing on flared elbows, it doesn't put you in the proper position to actually do the push-up where you're utilizing your chest and triceps and you'll be using, utilizing a lot more shoulders and pushing through the shoulder joint to perform the actual movement. So, if you notice that when you land on the ground, that you're not landing solid and keeping those elbows tucked in for the push-up, make sure you make the adjustment because you don't want to be doing this and then coming up and then trying to push through in order to get yourself back to the squat position to do the air jump at the end. Mistake number five, guys, is not breathing properly. And I talked about this a bit with mistake number one, but breathing is more important than just core control. You have to breathe steadily throughout this movement in order to not fatigue so quickly as you're performing multiple reps. You gotta bring oxygen in and get it to the muscles. And at the same time, if you start holding your breath too long with all these high impact exercises, your face is gonna turn red, you're gonna raise your blood pressure, and like I said, it's gonna tucker you out really quick. Now, there are crucial moments to where, like I said in the beginning, you have got to keep your core tight, and you can't keep your core tight as you're breathing in or out. So, 
in the portions of the movement to where you're dropping and getting the most impact on your core, that's going to be the most vital portion of the movement for you to hold that breath and keep it in. So typically what I do, because I'm a bit more advanced and I can go really fast with my burpees, is I take in a breath at the very top, I go down, and I just hit my push up right away, I'm still holding my breath, I push up to here, and then as I jump up, that's when I breathe out. And then I just reset my breath once on every single repetition. But obviously guys, as you're doing the movement and you're starting to fatigue, you're not going to be going as fast as you probably were when you first started. So for example, when I'm doing these, I'll do like 20 reps in a row, I'm going to start out, you know, going really fast like this. So I only need to reset my breath once. But as you start to fatigue and you're breathing obviously a lot heavier, it is okay to go slower with the movement and focus on your breathing. For me, with any exercise I do that's body weight and I'm doing a lot of repetitions of it, it's almost like the breathing helps me push myself through the movement where I'm more focused on you know, trying to get myself through it versus how many reps I have left. So if you're starting to fatigue out, take in a breath, go down to the bottom, breathe out, take in a breath, then jump back, go down, breathe out on the way up, take in a breath, come back to here, maybe breathe out one more time, then take in a breath, push through to the top, and then land. So it all depends on how fast you're going with the burpee, but breathing is super important. If you're holding your breath too much, you will fatigue much quicker. And the sixth and final mistake, guys, is not progressing with the movement. Now, if you're getting to a point to where you can do 20 to 30 burpees, no problem. I mean, obviously that's pretty incredible, but at the same time, you're really not maximizing the effectiveness of the exercise because it's getting to a point where it's getting too easy. Just like anything else you do in the gym, if it starts to get too easy, usually you add more resistance to it, and there is a way to do that with the burpee. However, I know some of you guys aren't there yet, so as I go through these progressions, I'm gonna start off with the simplest one. And the simplest way to start a burpee is to do plank burpees. And the reason why you do a plank burpee is because you're basically doing the entire movement, but when you get to the bottom plank position, you're not doing the push-up. For those of you who have a really hard time with push-ups that don't have the upper body strength to do, let's say, 10 to 12 burpees with the push-up included, the plank burpee is going to allow you to still start to work through those different ranges of motion and build the strength you need to get you ready to do the actual push-up position, or the actual push-up part of the movement. However, I will say, no matter what burpee you are doing, always make sure you're jumping as high as you can at the end of the movement. This is not a contest where you're trying to figure out or you're trying to beat somebody where how many burpees you can do in like 30 seconds. This is you trying to maximize the effectiveness of the exercise. And if you're just doing little baby jumps at the end of every single repetition, it's not helping you. It's only going to make it, that, make it so you don't progress as much as you could if you're doing as jump, jumping as high as you possibly can at the end of every single repetition. Now once you've mastered the plank burpee, obviously the next progression from there is the classic burpee or the standard burpee. Now obviously you know what full range of motion is for this movement because we've gone over it throughout this video. However, there still might be some, some of you that get to this point to where you can do the push-up and you either can only do, let's say, five burpees in a row with a full push-up, but by the time you get to that sixth one, maybe you still don't have quite the upper body strength you need to continue your repetitions doing the push-up. So what I say to you is, go, to the, go back to the plank if you need to, or what you can also do is do a push-up on your knees. And I talked about this in my push-up video, Dumbest Mistakes for Push-ups. Again, guys, make sure you check out that video if you need help with your push-ups. But what you can do is literally perform the burpee, and when you get down to the plank position, drop your knees to the ground, do your push-up on your knees, then lift your knees back up off the ground, back to the plank position, then explosively thrust your knees into your chest to get to the position you need to be in in order to do the jump squat at the end. The next progression is the high knees burpee, and this is where it starts to get a bit crazy, guys. Nobody likes doing high knees, and nobody really likes doing high knees at the end of a burpee, but it's great. You're going to get a lot more core activation, a lot more lower ab activation, and it's going to fatigue the crap 
out of your legs, especially your quads. And the way you do this is you're going to perform a standard burpee. However, at the end, when you jump in the air, you're going to jump and lift your knees as high as you possibly can. Just be careful though, because as you start to fatigue and lift your knees up, you want to make sure you can get them down quick enough to absorb the impact when you hit the ground. The last thing you want to do is jump so high and bring your knees up and then just kind of fall on the ground and hurt yourself. So, as you progress with this movement, start incorporating the high knees into it and challenge yourselves to do more repetitions like this. The next progression is the alternating jumping lunge burpee. Now for this progression guys, you're going to do the burpee the same way you normally would. However, at the end, instead of just doing a jumping squat, you're going to do an alternating jumping lunge. So jump into the air, land with your left foot forward, your right leg back, go down as low as you can, explosively push yourself into the air, switch legs, land, go as low as you can, explosively push yourself into the air again, and then go into your next repetition for your next burpee, and continuing, continue to do this for all your repetitions. The next progression is something I like to call a long jump burpee, where essentially we're taking the high knees and we're just pushing it one step further. So you're still doing a full push up, you're still doing full range of motion, however this time, instead of doing a squat jump and lifting your knees, you're going to jump forward as far as you possibly can. And then as soon as you land, you're going to turn around and then do a burpee and then jump back. Now obviously if you have the room and you want to jump forward a few times, that's fine. But if you have limited space where you only can do one jump, literally do a burpee, jump as far as you can, and then turn around and just keep going back and forth until you complete all your repetitions. And the last progression I have for you guys is the dumbbell burpee. And it should be pretty self-explanatory. What you guys are going to do is hold a dumbbell in each hand. I recommend starting off really light, maybe threes, maybe fives, and if you're feeling really, really strong today, maybe grab some tens. And you're going to perform the movement the same way you normally would, however I do recommend that when you get into the down position that you really just try to lower yourself so that those dumbbells hit the ground correctly, especially if you're using hexagons, the last thing you want to do is crank your wrist because you landed wrong with the dumbbells. So take it easy on the way down, plant those dumbbells into the ground, jump back, do your push up, get back to the squat position, explosively jump in the air, and then push those dumbbells over your head as much as you can. Now it should be pretty obvious that this is going to fatigue your shoulders much more than a normal burpee would. However, if you're cranking those burpees and they're a big part of your routine and you really want to maximize the benefits of the exercise, adding dumbbells to the movement can really help you out. And then if you want to, you can even start maximizing this exercise even more by incorporating the high knees, the alternating jumping lunge, or even the long jump while holding the dumbbells. It's totally up to you, just make sure you're always pushing your limits, but you're doing it safely. So there you have it guys, the six dumbest burpee mistakes sabotaging your gains. Please, if you enjoyed the video, show some love by smashing that like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and obviously guys, make sure you click in that bell so you never miss a new video upload. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave those comments below so I know what you want to see next, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.